Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. Sioux Falls Animal Control is searching for a stray dog that bit a woman on Sunday. Animal Control says the woman was at Woodier Park eating lunch when the stray dog came up to her. She described the dog as a long-haired black and tan German Shepherd type dog with a blue collar. Animal Control needs to verify the dog's vaccinations. If you have any information, call Animal Control. Someone in Sioux Falls is about to be a million dollars richer. The South Dakota Lottery says a one million dollar ticket for the Mega Millions was purchased at the East 26th Street Lewis Drug. The winning ticket matched five of five winning numbers and was just the Mega Ball away from the jackpot. South Dakota Lottery reminds the winner to sign the back of the ticket before claiming the prize at a lottery validation center. The full jackpot is still up for grabs after Tuesday night's drawing. The Compass Center in Sioux Falls is set to host the easiest race you'll ever run. South Dakota's laziest race is a point 5K, less than a third of a mile, to benefit the Compass Center, which provides care to survivors of domestic and sexual violence. We came up with the idea of a, of a point 5K, a, a race that anybody can do, and, and we use race in quotation marks very loosely, um, and, and we, we dubbed it South Dakota's laziest race. The event is Saturday at 11 o'clock at JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars in Sioux Falls. Entry fee is $30, but kids 11 and younger can participate for free. An organization is helping military and first responder families. It's called Folds of Honor. It provides educational scholarships to families of fallen or disabled military and first responders. The South Dakota chapter started raising money several years ago. Our board of directors is... A lot of them have military experience. Some of them don't. They just love helping others. And, and that's kind of what we, we've put together, a group of great individuals that are busting their tails. Hear from a veteran whose children received the scholarships in our Ion Kelloland tonight. Southeastern South Dakota got hammered with severe weather early this morning. Take a look at these photos. You can see part of a tree from a neighbor's yard fallen near the house. The person who sent the photo says the tree landed five feet from their bedroom window. The American flag hanging outside their home also took a beating from the wind and rain. Megan tells me she has some details about that damage and the heavy winds, winds we felt, right Megan? We had a wind gust near Beersford at about 80 miles this morning, Dan, and then 72 miles an hour was reported in Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls also reached about three quarters of an inch of rain, not quite. Yankton right now also get, got beaten with the storm this morning. Sunshine and 71 degrees with just a very light breeze. And that's going to be the story for the rest of the afternoon. Skies are starting to clear out in Sioux Falls right now at 72 and no wind at all. If we take a look at the rest of our temperatures, we have 71 in Mitchell, 69 in Aberdeen, 67 in Pierre, and 78 degrees in Rapid City. We do have a little bit of a stronger wind in western South Dakota, about 15 to 20 miles an hour, but eastern Kelloland is under just a gentle, very light breeze, if any wind at all. And if we take a look at Kelloland Live Doppler radar, those rain showers have moved out of our area and we'll keep just some partly to mostly clear skies for the rest of the afternoon. Here's a look at today, 80 in Sioux Falls, 75 with a chance of a few more rain showers in Aberdeen, 84 in Pier and 85 in Rapid City. Then for tonight, we'll clear out our skies, 60 in Sioux Falls, 56 in Aberdeen, 60 in Pier, and 59 in Rapid City. Everybody under just a gentle north wind. And then for the day tomorrow, sunshine and a couple degrees warmer, 87 in Sioux Falls, 85 in Aberdeen, 91 in Pier, and 88 in Rapid City with a chance for afternoon rain and thunder showers. We'll take a closer look at that in just a little bit. Thank you, Megan. The Great Plains Zoo in Sioux Falls has a new penguin. The zoo says a humble penguin chick hatched on June 16th and has been under close surveillance by animal care and veterinary teams. According to the zoo, humble penguins are a vulnerable species. Two penguins, Maya and El Nino, had two fertile eggs, but the one that hatched was given to Pippa and Quince to incubate. Zoo staff will do a blood draw soon to reveal if the new penguin is male or female. 
We all know how hazy this summer has been, with dozens of air quality alerts already issued this year across South Dakota and Minnesota. Our CBS affiliate in Minnesota's David Schumann visit with the scientists watching the skies to learn how they make those decisions. Fenced off on the side of I-94 overlooking downtown Minneapolis is a small shed. Nate Niebling with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency operates the equipment inside and on the roof, collecting data for MPCA meteorologists to analyze. We measure air quality in sensors like this. Uh, all around me are different sensors that ingest air. Um, we're looking for ozone and then particulate matter. The collected air is measured in here. Levels are, are looking pretty good right now. 3.9, that's pretty stellar compared to last week. Last week we saw numbers up in the hundreds, which since I started working here I've never seen. Readings that high mean hazy skies and dangerous air. Matt and his team make the call to issue an alert. We as meteorologists have to look at the weather conditions and then we look at the upstream observations and kind of get a sense of what we think is going to happen. We try to get air quality alerts out 12 to 24 hours in advance. There have been 24 alerts this year, a record number, and this is before Canada's busy wildfire season has even really started. Last week and the week before just really highlighted for me the importance of the work we do um, and what it means to folks. Matt says Canada's wildfires aren't going away, but the question of unsafe air being our new summer normal depends on the weather. That's your job, basically. It's, it's just another type of weather forecasting, but a very specialized one. And so um, this data is, is the ground truth, is you know, the gold standard. In Minneapolis, David Schumann, WCCO News. There are eight other sensor stations in that metro and 24 total across Minnesota. Now you can buy a high-end air quality sensor for your own home for roughly $250.